Aren't you shiny, happy people? Hello, robot fans. We're here at the Science Museum in London to see the opening of the robots exhibition. We spoke to curator Ben Russell. The key robots I wanted were undetermined. You know, I thought, well, actually, what can I, what can I get hold of? Um, we, had, you know, we had to go out and rely on, on borrowing and, and, and new acquisitions and that sort of thing. Um, we, we thought we'd concentrate on the humanoid robots. We, 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 I realised early on that it's the humanoids that most fascinate people because they're so much like us. So I thought, let's go for those guys. We have a lot of uh, robots that come in on loan to us from around the world, from Japan, from America, uh, from uh, other museums in the UK. Um, so, for example, with the Bose Museum, very kindly lent us their Silver Swan, which is the most astonishing automaton built in 1773. Um, when you start doing an exhibition, you always have a sort of, you, you sort of go, mm, who's got what things and how likely are they to give them to us? And I knew about the Swan because it's the most remarkable machine and we thought, wow. And I thought they'll never lend that to us. And, and the, the museum director said, well, if you don't ask, we don't get. So we thought we'd have a try. And amazingly, they said yes. And amazingly, actually, a, a, a gratifyingly high number of the people out there with robots said yes when we asked them. So it's, it's, a, really, it's a really unique collection of objects, actually. I'm, very, I'm really pleased with how it's worked out. We sort of subtly dodged the AI question because AI can be a very sort of abstract and intangible thing. And we sort of said, well, yeah, when you book railway tickets or your flight to your holidays, or well, that sort of thing, that, that's basically AI and it's software. And uh, what's more interesting from our point of view is, is embodied intelligence. So intelligence is okay, but it's got to be in a vessel. And actually, what is that form? Actually, we say it tends to be a humanoid form, but how does that affect the shaping of the intelligence within it? Now, I think that's that, that's really where we are. In a way, we're we're a sort of a, sort of small, relatively small niche in the whole realm of robotics. But but I, I think that's where the real challenges are. AI is great, but as soon as you get it in some in a body and make it walk down some stairs, it's not going to work. We said a robot is a, is a, a robot definition is a robot that uh, is a machine that looks lifelike or it behaves in a lifelike way. And we, we didn't want to sort of stick up to the, 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 the usual sort of sci-fi tropes of robots that are going to enslave us all and destroy the world, but, but have robots which are a bit more thought-provoking than that. And of course the interaction is one of those moments you think, oh wow. And if, I mean, the interaction itself is amazing, but if it, that interaction can then sort of spark a bit of interest and people go away and think, well, you know, if robots are coming and they're going to escape from the lab, how does that work? Then I think we, we've done our job pretty well, hopefully. Here's a look at you, kid.